All right, folks, today I'm going to be cutting some aluminium. I'm going to be doing two things. Firstly, figuring out some feeds and speeds for various new cutters, and secondly, a bit of 3D surfacing. So I'm going to be trying out three new tools. This is a 12 millimeter single flute insert cutter, then got a six millimeter ball nose end mill, and a three flute six millimeter end mill. I've got my sketchy setup all done with uh, a vise, mounted a bit forward, which in turn will be held in place by the vacuum bed. Got a bit of plastic to stop the oil from the mister soaking in, and I've decided to create a cardboard enclosure just to try and stop as many chips as possible flying everywhere. Okay, so first off, I'm going to try the 6mm 3 flute end mill. Simple 2D contour, but with a bottom height set 40mm below the selected contour. Running at 12,000 RPM and to begin with 0.075mm feet per tooth, which is the towards the bottom end of the recommended chip load for this tool. The first cut is a 0.2mm radial step over, then step up to a 0.6 and then 0.9. Then I'm going to repeat the exact same again, but this time with a higher feet per tooth of 0.1 millimeters and see how the, re the results differ. I did try doing a conventional cut as opposed to fine milling and as you can hear it didn't like it for whatever reason so I won't be trying that again. Afterwards I'm going to move on to the 12mm single edge insert cutter and you can see I'm doing a similar thing where I'm trying different uh, step downs um, all at 15,000 rpm and a 0.127mm feed per tooth which again is towards the bottom end of the of the recommended feeds and speeds for this tool. So I'm using this more of a kind of a facing tool than anything and if I do end up using this for roughing out any parts then I'll be taking uh, f almost full engagement or radial cuts or full step over but with a low axial step down. So after that first test I'm going to then do the same again but with a higher feed per tooth of 0.177 millimeters. So I'm looking for how good the finish is on the lighter cuts and the, the lower feed and then how far I can actually push the tool and the machine before chatter becomes an issue or anything else. So if you watch the corner of the vise as we start going to these heavier and faster cuts, you'll see that the vise actually wiggles slightly from side to side. You can see here, this is where I noticed that it, it moved, so I paused the program and stopped there. Okay, so now I've done those tests and kind of learnt the tools a little bit more, I'm going to do something a bit more complicated. This is the first time I've ever done any 3D tool paths or any kind of surfacing. To begin with, I'm going to do a 3D adaptive with that same 12mm insert cutter. I'm using the higher feed per tooth, but a uh, maximum of 1.5mm roughing step down with a fine step down of 0.5mm. After that, I'm going to use said Borno Zen Mill, which is a 6mm uh, two flute. And then I'm going to do a parallel tool path. I, d I contemplated and kind of messed about with the different uh, 3D strategies that Fusion op offers between like scallop and uh, contour and spiral and radial, but I've settled on parallel just because it's the simplest. 
So I'm running this at 18,000 RPM, a 0 0.0381 millimeter feed per tooth. I can't find any feeds and speeds for this kind of thing. So I'm taking a guess, and this is kind of roughly similar, a bit lower to uh, almost half um, what I was running the normal six millimeter flat ML from earlier. I'm doing a 0.2 millimeter step over and I've changed the direction to both ways. You'll notice that means that the tool is gonna go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards rather than just doing climb milling, lifting up and coming back and climb milling again. Um, I don't think it'll affect the surface finish too much, but it saves a lot of time and a lot of linking moves. Afterwards, I'm gonna come in with the six millimeter three flute from earlier and just finish the edges just so it's a bit nice and finished there rather than leaving the rough stock. I'm not going all the way down because I don't want to. And then finally, I'm using the 2D trace, which is actually a 3D tool path, not quite 2D, to chamfer these edges. So as the machine was cussing, I was actually manually overriding the RPM from the control and got it down to about 14,000 RPM from 18,000. And by doing so, created a, a bigger chip load, but it didn't actually seem to make much difference to the finish. So effectively at 14,000 RPM, I was getting about a 0.05 millimeter feed per tooth instead of the original 0.0381. So this is good because it means I can feed the machine a bit faster, which on surfacing takes quite a long time. And it means that I'm not risking any kind of tool rubbing or anything like that, which damages tool life. So there we go, part is out of the vise, looks really good. The surface section of the top is pretty good. You can see there's a couple of streaks like kind of there to make it out from where I was changing the RPM just to try different values for feed per tooth. But apart from that, it's pretty smooth, uh, it looks really good. The sides are excellent, really, really reflective and shiny, you can see my thumb in that. That's great. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up there for today. Good first attempt at doing some aluminium uh, and some surfacing as well. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.